Welcome to another episode of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Today we have a very, very, very special guest. His name is Robert Parham. He's a former five-time kickboxing world champion. Um, I'm very excited to have him here tonight, and I can't wait for you guys to check it out, so don't go anywhere. Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday Amazing. Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday amazing. Everyday amazing. Sky Alton. Welcome back to the show. We have Robert Parham, former five-time world kickboxing champion. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm great. <laughs> I'm having a great time here. <laughs> First off, I want to thank you so much, man, for, for giving me some of your time. And when I heard you were going to be in SAC, I, I really had to have you on the show because I think you have such an amazing story. And so thank you again for just coming and, and sharing your story. Um, and without further ado, let's, let's start to get into it, man. Right. Well, well, first, let me say thank you for having me. And like I said, I feel like I'm on the Arsenio Hall show. Look at this set. It's oh, man, you're, you're, you're too kind. You're too kind. But you, you heard it here. You heard it here first. So we're, we're going to clip that for sure. <laughs> um, now, first off, man, how, how did you get into kickboxing? For me to tell that story, I have to tell the story before. Okay. So when I was in the fifth grade, I got beat up by a girl. Well, first off, what would you do to her? <laughs> I'm not telling any secrets. Okay, okay? all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so after she beat me up and sent me to the hospital, <laughs> and after my dad finished laughing, my dad was into the martial arts. He kept me in and taught me some Tai Chi and some Judo and mm -hmm. some simple things. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to handle myself. When I uh, left Hillside, New Jersey, where I grew up, mm -hmm. and joined the Air Force, uh, I got stationed at Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I met my primary instructor, Dr. Alonzo Jones, mm -hmm. and uh, studied the art of combatai with him. And uh, when he left, I took over to school. And, you know, I was teaching, and I eventually went to sport karate. Mm -hmm. And sport karate, for those of you who don't know, is like uh, what they do on a karate kid. Okay, you know, so but, but not with full contact. When well, you're not supposed to do it with full contact, but some people got do. it. Just enough to show technique that right. I could have hurt you if right. I wanted to, but right. I just tapped you to let you know. Right, that's okay. the idea. But got there it. are people who say a knockout is better than a win. They'd rather get disqualified. Just, just well, that, just that, that sounds like bad <laughs> right there. You <laughs> yeah, know, like. so. Um, uh, after I did that, um, I had a dare. Someone dared me to go into kickboxing. Well, this. Tech, if your technique is so good, you should be able to do it in the ring. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Hey, you know. So, you know, I got with a promoter, and uh, he got me into a, a few fights. And actually, in my second fight, I had a shot at the vacant world middleweight title. In your second fight? My second fight. Wow. Well, now, who, who do you remember the guy you fought? Uh, his name was Billy Johnson. Billy Johnson. Billy okay. the Hammer Johnson. It's a real strong guy. And this is your second fight, second and you're fight. fighting for a title. Fight for the World Kick Karate and Kickboxing World Karate and Kickboxing Council World Middleweight Title. Wow. Yeah. See, what what people don't understand though is I had an extensive amateur boxing background. Oh, they didn't know that. They didn't know that. Okay, that wasn't on a resume. See, you know? <laughs> I've been in the ring with Kelsey Banks who went to the 1988 Olympics. Wow. I've been in the ring with Roy Jones. Oh, we man. all know who Roy Jones yeah, is. Yeah, we all know Roy Jones, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been in the ring with Frankie Lyles, who was the former WBA middleweight champion of the world. So I've been in, you know, I've had an extensive uh, uh, boxing career and it transferred in kickboxing because I find, and this is no knock on kickboxers, mm -hmm. but during my era, there weren't a lot of kickboxers who boxed Mm. Very well. Got I mean, it. they could box, but they, they, there were some things mixing from the game because they concentrated more on kicking. Ah, uh, okay. You see, that, so, made, that makes sense. So you were better with the hands. Then. I was better with the hands. Ah. You know? and, and I have these long legs, so that helped out a lot. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so tell me a little about that transition from traditional uh, karate to kick. Was, was that a hard tradition, like, a change for you? Or? No, no, okay. it wasn't. It wasn't because. Um, 
in a discipline, once you understand the rules and you're disciplined enough and you train for that, it's, it's just execution. To me, a fight is a fight. You just tell me the rules and I'll do it, you know? Spoken like that's a true champion mindset right there, <laughs> you know? Fight is a fight. You just tell me the rules and I'll get it done, that's, you know? There you <laughs> go. There you go. Um, okay, so the style of karate that you, you started with, what, what, what particular style was that? Well, I belted in a, a martial arts system that originated in Africa. Really? Okay. It's called, uh, the original name of it is, um, is, uh, it's escaping my name right now. It escapes me right now. It's called Kambatai Karate Du Kempo okay. right now. But it was called Gazert Al Malik was the original name of it. It came to the United States during the what they call the Zamina Masfiant, where people were um, princes and kings and queens and nobles uh, escaped from North Africa uh, from persecution mm -hmm. and landed up in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Now, if you watch the movie called um, uh, what was that name of, of Mississippi? Uh, that movie, um, oh gee whiz, I can't. It's, it escapes me. But there's a, a movie about Mississippi during the s slave years, and there was a free colony of black people, mm -hmm. African Americans, in, in that time in Mississippi. And I, I can't remember the name of the movie. Goodness it, it, gracious. It's always like that. It comes to you right <laughs> after you're not thinking yeah. about it anymore. I'll call you later. Yeah, hey, call I'm me later, and then, hey, you know, <laughs> then I can go find the movie and, and, and look it up. Um, so the next question I want to ask you, um, did you, do you have a favorite strike, you know, that, you know, like a favorite like move that kind of was like your go-to or that you were known for when you were doing competition? Whatever lands, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but technically, technically it's my hook kick, my lead leg hook okay. kick, which I learned from Bill Superfoot Wallace. Really? Okay. All right. How did so you get him? To, how, how did you get him? To, did he teach you or did you I like went to a Bill Wallace seminar mm -hmm. and then Bill pulled me to the side and showed me these exercises that he does mm -hmm. and how what they call chambering your knee the way you bring your knee. Right. And I, and I went back, I was like, wow, he showed me special attention. Right. And I just did it over and over and over and over. I must have did it like a thousand times. That's, that's what you it know, takes, right? Repetition. Yeah. And then there it was, my hook kick was, was pretty good. Now, okay, so were you, you, you win your, you know, in your second fight, you win the title. Mm -hmm. um, and so from there, walk me into like, Tell me how you got to your, your third and your fourth and your fifth. Like, what was that process like? As, uh, I started, uh, I defended the middleweight title, mm -hmm. and then I moved up in weight. I moved up, uh, see, middle, super middle. I, I moved up two weight divisions. Okay. To the light heavyweight division. It's a big jump. It is. It <laughs> is. Because of my affinity for ice cream. I love <laughs> mint chocolate chip ice cream. I could not get enough. You know? you know what? They they should have sponsored you. You know that would have been a good <laughs> that would have been a good story. You know, like listen. You know, like uh, this this was what I enjoy. You know, so because of that, I'm moving up in weight. You yeah, know? so I moved up in weight. And the night of the fight, I fought for the world light heavyweight championship. The night of the fight, well, the night before when we had the weigh-ins, I barely the the weight limit is 175 pounds. Mm -hmm. I think I came in at like 172, 173. Okay, so you you, know? you barely. Yeah, barely. But the guy I fought, the champion, came in. He stepped on a scale for about three seconds till it said 175, and he jumped off. Ooh, that's not a good sign. He 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 walked in the ring easy at 190, 195, <sighs> easy, easy. He was strong. He was leaning on me. I was like, wow, he's not <laughs> 175 pounds. Right. You know. So uh, uh, I hit him with the hook kick. And okay. he didn't go anywhere. I was like, okay, I'm in here with the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's different, okay. Like, this no, usually put any, any, anyone else would have been out by yeah, now, okay. Yeah, he just kept coming. So I, I was like, okay, so this is going to be a long fight. I just be careful. And he, he actually hurt me in that fight. I remember mm. his third round, he hit me with a spinning back fist and the room was spinning. It was really the first time in kickboxing mm -hmm. that I had been dazed or hurt. You know, when you're dazed and hurt in a, in a ring, everything is so peaceful. Really? Yeah. Okay. People are cheering all slow. <sighs> so it's like you see in movies. Yeah, you know, you always see that scene where everything like slows yeah, down and that's right. you know, and I thought that it was just for a dramatic effect, no, but that's, that's really that's what real. you guys go through. That's okay. real. You hear the ringing in your ears and everything is all peaceful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if you're going to go, you know, like, you should go in peace. Go in peace. <laughs> so, so, okay. How, so I'm assuming you, you had to dig deep. 
you know, to, I did. to okay. I did, I did. Um, so I won the light heavyweight title, and then I went back down to win the super middleweight title, and then I went back to light heavyweight, then I went to cruiserweight, I had a friend of mine who was a strength trainer, mm-hmm. and he's like, hey, let's try this strength and conditioning thing. I was like, but I'm a fighter, I'm fighting in this weight class. Right. Oh, guy had my martial arts studio and all my equipment there, and oh, he put me on this regimen, and I was like, like a monster. You, jacked, you got jacked. I, I was jacked, 190 <laughs> pounds. I was like, I'm fighting cruiserweight for for the uh, what they call the what was that the round one competition kickboxing world cruiserweight title, and I mm-hmm. won that. Wow. And then I fought heavyweight because I, once again, I couldn't stay off the ice cream. And after I had all that weight on me, all that muscle, I couldn't put it off. Couldn't lose it, yeah. Couldn't lose it and fought heavyweight, um, won that title. And then that was it for me. Now, what would you say, I always hear fighters a lot of time, like weight cutting is mm-hmm. a lot of time like their toughest challenge. It is. So you, you agree like that was? It is. Wh- for me, during my sport karate years, I had mm-hmm. to weight cut because I had to fight middleweight. Um, 160 pounds, 155 pounds, depending on what uh, area of the country you go to, they have different weight limits. So weight cutting was really hard back then. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I was kickboxing, I made much sure that I was comfortable so I didn't have to weight cut. Okay. So you fought closer to like your natural weight. I fought close to my natural weight so that I wouldn't have to, you know, punish myself for that. Right. You know, Um, the only time I really had to make weight is I did a comeback fight. A comeback fight, okay. So I get a phone call from a friend of mine. Hey, Robert, we're putting on this show at the uh, President Casino here in Biloxi. I'd like you to be part of it. Sure, what do you want me to do? You want me to commentate? You want me to ref? Right. You know, you want me to work somebody's corner? Anything. Right. Well, we want you to fight. Dude, I haven't fought in three years. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. Right. Well, we'll let you fight for a title. I got enough titles. Thank you. We're going to give you X amount of dollars. I'm like, okay, where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I got enough titles, but now we're talking money. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe, so, maybe, I, can, maybe I can do it. How many rounds? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I fought uh, under a different set of rules. Mm-hmm. You know, kickboxing had evolved since I had stopped. Mm-hmm. And you, it's called sand shower, where you can actually sweep and throw. Um, have you ever heard of Kung Lee? Yes. Kung Lee is like the king of sand shower. So uh, I was on the undercard of his fight. Wow. That night. Yeah, I remember Kong Lee was really, really, really big. I think at one point, I think he, didn't he transition to like Strike Force? Yeah, I think Strike he, Force yeah, in the yeah. UFC, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that night I fought, and um, fighters get old quick. All the wear and tear? Yeah, you can see that, wow, a year ago I wouldn't have missed that kick. I'm missing these punches by a quarter of an inch. My timing is off. Right. And the guy I fought, he hit me, I'm gonna tell you his name in a second. He hit me with a kick. I guess it was the fifth or sixth round. And then next thing I knew, I was like, wow, that light is out up there. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> needs to fix that. <laughs> so you were on the ground. I was out. Oh, was, oh, so you, you went out, out. I went, I went out on my way down, and me hitting the ground woke me up. Wow. And I really didn't know where I was. And I that, that was the first time in your career then? In my kickboxing career. In your career, kickboxing yeah. career. So wow. I was like, wow, look at those lights. Why are all these people here? Why is everybody looking at me? What's going on? And the guy I fought was Pat Barry. Pat Barry? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I, I know Pat Barry. Pat Barry is pretty big in the in the you know kickboxing world. Yeah, and so I yeah. Pat Barry that night. Wow. Yeah, wow. Like no, that <laughs> first of all, how old was Pat Barry when you fought him too? He was like 19, 20, 21. He so, was just a baby. Yeah, so they, they you know they took you out of you had you for a comeback fight, fight a much younger younger yeah, guy. I was yeah. I was how old was I? Thirty five? Find a 19-year-old, up-and-coming Pat Berry. Yeah, up-and-coming Pat Berry. And um. here's the funny thing. I had sparred him like two weeks before. And I was supposed to fight somebody else, and that person backed out, and they put Pat in. Oh. So, and so he, you know, he already got a taste of like, you know, yeah. you, you know, what you were working with yeah. and your technique and all that. Oh, man. So, you know? But he's, Pat's a really great guy, you know, a really great guy. So I follow his career and support him as much as I can, you mm-hmm. know. So would you say, like, uh, within the kickboxing community, you got, I mean, I know it's competition and everything like that, but would you say, like, you guys are all, you know, pretty close, you know? Like, at, at the time you were in it, like, you always knew each other yeah. and everything? Yeah, you know each other. You uh, um, 
try not to get too personal with right. someone in your weight classes. You might have to fight them. Right, right, <laughs> <You know>? right, right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we were a tight community. It's a small world, small community, you know. Okay. We're going to take a quick PSA break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Every day amazing with Sky Alton. Hey, everyone, guess who's back? You guessed it. First Lady Felicia Kay here, and by popular demand, I will be returning for a season two of the First Lady Point of View show. Find out how you can be a guest on the First Lady Point of View show by contacting us at show at gmail.com and make sure you also follow us on all social media platforms facebook us at the first lady point of view show instagram first lady point of view show and go on over to tiktok and follow us on tiktok as well the first lady pov i can't wait to have you all make sure you tune into the first lady point of view show courtesy of access sacramento and comcast xfinity on channel 17 i can't wait to have you all until then see you soon Hello, my name is Sky Alton, host of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Be sure to check it out on Exit Sacramento, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Sky underscore Alton. And check out past episodes of the show on YouTube at Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. See you then. Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with Robert Parham. So, you, you talked about your competition, you talked about moving up in weight classes and you know conquering all these uh these weight classes and getting these championships now talk to me a little bit like after retiring from kickboxing what was uh because I, I i understand you do some acting yeah yeah so i i wanted to leverage my uh sportsmanship as you would mm -hmm. notoriety into film you know i love film i love acting etc and so forth i had my first shot at acting if you would um, on the big screen as an extra in Under Siege. You know? I know that movie. So uh, if you stop the clip right when all the water is coming into the ship and there's this guy by the steps, that's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm going right to go back there. and watch it. I'm going to be looking for yeah, that clip. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> so uh, uh, I had a good friend, um, uh, Master John Graham, Grandmaster John Graham now, mm -hmm. uh, who was a uh, stunt coordinator on some films and he called me and said, hey, Robert, I want to get you in a film, let's get you in a movie, da 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 and, uh, um, and that's how it started. I got on set and I got hooked. Mm. I was like, wow. What you, would you, would you love about it? Like, I don't know. Mm. I, I really couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew that was for me. Mm. I just, knew that just like I just like being on set, you know, even though, you know, those sets were long and we were wet, you know, and we're waiting for certain actors to come out, and I loved it. Mm. I absolutely loved it. John called me again and I got into uh, um, a movie that was released in Germany called Watership Warrior. Now, but before we continue, take a look at this, this picture right here. You know, is this, is this, <laughs> <laughs> now is this one of your, uh, your casting call pictures? Or? That is a publicity photo that we did uh, a couple years ago when I was directing a movie in Memphis. Um, and uh, sitting right across from me is Hawthorne James. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you had your first movie role, and you know, you from there. You you knew you wanted to do it more. Mm -hmm. um, what was the like out there in you know in Hollywood and stuff like that? What what was uh, the process like? What, did you find it easy or hard to kind well, of break in or? When I did those roles, I was still in Mississippi. Okay, Mississippi. Okay, so after Hurricane Katrina, at the mm -hmm. time when I was married, blew our family to California. I was like, wow, I'm in California. I can really do this. Right. You know, um, but the roles that were offered to me were thug, mm. drug dealer, or a cop, mm. you know. They weren't major roles. They were right. filling roles on, you know, the guy on the roles. stereotypical roles. And I was like, this is not what I want to do. Right. You know, I want to follow in the paths of my heroes. Mm -hmm. Guys like Ron Van Cleef. Mm. Guys like the late Jim Kelly. Mm. Guys like Fred Williamson, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to follow in their footsteps. So I auditioned for a role for a film that I didn't get 
and then I saw the film after it was done, and as far as I was concerned, the acting was subpar. Mm -hmm. The gentleman who got the role is just, just, so I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy a camera and I'm gonna do it myself. Mm. <laughs> I, listen, I, I think that's the way to go, man. I, like, I, I commend you for, for one, sticking to your, you know, your morals and, and what you believe in and not just, you know, taking it easy. Cause you know, a lot of people want to make it by any means. Right. And so they're compromising their morals right. to, to get it. And right. the fact that you were able to say, you know what, I'm better than this. You know, this isn't what, you know, this isn't the vision I have for myself. So I'm not, I'm not going to portray myself in that way right. on, you know, on film, especially like you being a, you know, five time, you know, kickboxing world champion. It's like, I can see how that would go against the martial artist way. So it would. I mean, it, from a martial arts standpoint, you look at the people who are who grew up in the martial arts. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. That went over to film. Uh, who are African American? H how many can you name? I mean, and, and today or, or back back then? Go back then. Uh, the most one of the most the most popular people to me was Jim Kelly. Okay, you, so you got Jim Kelly. Mm -hmm. You got Ron Van Cleef. Ron Van Cleef. Yes. You got Carl Scott. You got Ron Hall. You got Ty Mock. You got Billy Blanks. Forgot about Billy Blanks. You got man. Wesley Snipes. Oh, man. And you got Michael Jai White. That's Wait. eight people in 40 years. Wow. Yeah. When you, when you, <laughs> when you really think about it that way, yeah, there's, there's, not a, there's not a lot of us out there that are, you know, who made it big, at least. Right. Who are, who are doing it. Right. Right. And I don't have to be big. I mean, what is success? To me, success is be able to do what you want when you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Success to me is not uh, measured by money or tangible goods, et cetera, right. and so forth. So as long as I'm able to do what I want to do, mm -hmm. I'm successful. Had I went to Hollywood route, I would have never been in a movie opposite of the people that I grew up watching. Mm. You know, I start, I can say I start in a movie with Fred Williamson. Mm. Me and Fred Williamson are on the poster. I'm the lead. I can say I've been in a movie with Ron Van Cleef. Mm. I can say I was in a movie with Gloria Hendry, the first black Bond girl. Wow. I can say that I was in a movie with Cinda Williams. What? Wow. Cinda Williams? <laughs> Cinda Williams. Listen, see, that, that goes to show you right there, like, you knew your path, man. Because, like, it, like you said, had you not stuck to your guns, none of those things would have happened. None of them would have happened. You know, I would be an extra, I'd still be doing the thug thing, and I'm not a thug. You know, right. I grew up in a nice middle class family with strict traditional values. Was a military man in military the Air Force? Man in the Air Force, I'm no thug, <laughs> you know? Come on, come on. So what was that, uh, you know, when you decided to do your own thing, was that process, what was that process like? Was it, was it hard in the beginning? Um, did you find it, did, I'm, I mean, assuming anyone who starts their own thing, it's always has this growing plan, right, right, like challenges. Right, right. But uh, I, I, I would take that you, you're happier doing your own thing because it's yours, right? right. And, you know, you can kind of control it. So right. just talk to me a little bit about how you, how you started and how you grew. Well, the process was challenging because you only know what you saw and the people in the business don't tell you the business. Mm. They don't tell you. You right. have to find that out on your own. You know, I, because I grew up in the martial arts world, I became friends with Jim Kelly. Jim mm -hmm. Kelly used to call me at three o'clock in the morning and we would have long conversations. I became friends with Art Camacho, who is a uh, martial arts director. And he's directing other movies outside of martial arts. Right. And we have long talk. Art came down and helped me direct a fight scene for one of my movies. Wow. All because you had that connection with him. All because I had that connection in the martial arts world. Mm. You know? So it was a painful process. We start doing short films. Mm -hmm. and then you graduate. You know? One of the most successful short films I was in is this uh, short film called Buster Jones. Buster Jones. Okay. It's about a, uh, it's in the, set in the 1980s. And it's about a, <laughs> a older basketball, minor league basketball player who's a black belt who finds out his cousin is killed. He goes to investigate his cousin's killing and finds out there's a bigger plot to blow up the 1984 Olympics. 
Wow, wow okay. All right, so that's on YouTube. Okay, All I'm right. to check that out. Buster Jones, yeah. Buster Jones. It's, it's, it was cut as a trailer, so we're going to uh, eventually do the, do the whole thing. Okay. Now. Yeah, um, man, like, <laughs> just, just hearing, like, your whole uh, beginning, like, you know, how you got into, you know, the martial arts world, to kickboxing, to eventually transition into to film, and how your connections, man, like, from the martial arts world and the kickboxing world helped you over. Because a lot of people, they may not always make that connection. They may think, okay, this, you know, he was a sports guy, but, you know, this is film, and so what, you know, how was that gonna, how was that gonna help you, you know? And the fact that you knew all these people, man, and you had a good relationship with these people and they liked you, just shows a lot about your character and you as a person. Well, well thank you, you know. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take this as a compliment and uh, pay you later for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've just been fortunate, you know. I'm fortunate to be where I am. I'm fortunate to have the friends and the mentors that I do. Um, I, I can't mention everybody because the right. list is endless with people like Ray Mercer, former WBO heavyweight champion, Shoney Carter from the UFC, mm -hmm. uh, Don the Dragon Wilson, awesome. Cynthia Rothrock, Eric Lee, you know, I've mentioned Conan Lee, Wow. You know, uh, Grandmaster Eric O'Neill. Uh, just so many people mm. have been in my corner supporting me um, and giving me guidance, you know. And, and it's not like you star, I star in a movie with these people and then that's it, mm -hmm. you know. We, we talk often, you know. Right. I, I was just saw Fred Williamson, uh, I think, three weeks ago, mm. you know. Um, and and we, we talk, I talk to everybody often because... I have to have the knowledge so I can pass it to somebody else and make their life, if they want to do this, easier. Right. You know? Well, once again, man, I want to thank you so much, Robert, for coming on the show and sharing your story. And I think anybody who sees this episode and, and sees how you got started to where you are now, I definitely think they're going to be inspired. And once again, man, I thank you for all the work that you've done, like just in the kickboxing world and just your story, man, helped so many people. I was inspired by like your story. Like when I first heard about you, it inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much again for coming on the show. Um, and I want to thank you guys out there for watching another episode of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Once again, you can catch episodes on YouTube at Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. And you can reach me at Sky underscore Alton on Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you then. Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday Amazing. Sky Alton Everyday Amazing Everyday Amazing Sky Alton Thank you again, Robert Parham, for coming on the show and speaking with me. And everyone, be sure to check out his new movie, Mad as Hell, on Tubi. One of the doctors, I just don't know.